welcome everyone for the talk show what exactly is clinical trial they go with the same phase again if there is any changes required and generally how long is this period uh, sudhakar i mean i am assuming from the talks that it would be like a couple of years um, you know uh, trials and stuff like that um and have you seen any real life example agar uh, where you would say wow this student has done marvelous in this you know industry or something like that beyond you of course welcome everyone for the talk show uh, today we are going to discuss on career opportunities in clinical research for bsc and biotechnology uh, we have dr sudhakar bangera with us and uh, welcome uh, mr sudhakar um, we would like to hear from you about your you know experiences and your introduction please yeah thank you and um, yeah it would be um, but thank you so much for this and i hope the students uh, not just uh, bsc in biotechnology or btech in biotechnology but those who you know are in pharmacy life sciences or even mbbs and you know dentists or any other they can also be in you know, a part of this uh, growing clink research industry so yeah thank you so much and hopefully it will be helpful for uh, the students who want to take a break in into this pharmaceutical research industry yep then uh, can you tell you tell something about yourself sudhakar uh, my name is sudhakar bangera um, i don't prefix uh, doctor because i don't practice nowadays but by education uh, i know i have done my mbbs uh, md pharmacology uh, masters in clinical trials uh, and also i have done pg diploma in pharmaceutical marketing uh, plus um, uh, also done my international and indian vaccinology courses uh, over my last uh, 25 years now that's, that's by good. education but by the work experience i've been um, in the industry for about now 22 years uh, but uh, clinical research i've been you know uh, having the background of about um, about 26 years now uh, i've been doing since 1996 during my md in pharmacology that's good to hear sudha i think uh, students would be enlightened with your uh, uh, knowledge and what you're going to share today so um, uh, Mr. Dagar, before we go into much details, uh, I think the first and the foremost thing, as a basic, would be you know what exactly is clinical trial, uh, so that you know audience, if there anybody has a confusion, at least they know what it means. Yeah. So uh, clinical trials are basically um, you know the type of research that studies new drugs, new biological products, including vaccine, new surgical procedures, new radiological procedures, including contrast media. Uh, new medical devices behavioral treatments and preventive care basically they evaluate the effects of these new products mm-hmm. uh, what we in general call as pharmaceuticals or drug but includes a lot of things uh, their effects on human health outcome so that you know we know exactly whether they are safe and at the same time working as well mm-hmm. uh, because basically we want uh, new things that comes to market to make sure that the you know make the patients to live longer happier and healthier yeah so uh, clinical trials are also carefully designed reviewed and completed and they need to be approved by a regulatory agency of that particular country and also institutional ethics committee before they can start so people of all ages you know can take part in clinical trials including children also you know we start uh, from newborn all the way to you know elderly or geriatric patients yeah so clinical trials are of four phases um, plus post marketing surveillance basically uh, phase 1 is the one which you know um, are usually tested uh, you know are usually testing for new drugs for the first time in a small group of volunteers uh, sometimes we use uh, patients as well for some of the drugs but here in phase 1 we uh, generally um, uh, use normal volunteers so that a safe dose range can be tested and we can see the side effects or adverse events first time in human so 
this could be done in tens of volunteers uh, but once we know the, uh, the range between two or three then you know um, we go to the next step that is called as a phase two so phase one is in uh, normal volunteers whereas phase two is in patients uh, under which you know i mean for which we want to check a particular drug in a particular therapeutic indication so if they are found to be safe in phase one then we need to test them on a larger group of uh, patients and monitor for uh, more adverse effects and also their efficacy so um, these are done in generally in about hundreds of patients um, once we know that they are safe in patients and also it's working in a particular therapeutic area then you know we go for confirmatory testing what we call it is a phase 3 study and these are you know, done generally on a larger uh, patient population uh, you know good between uh, most of the time we use between 18 to 65 and uh, you know they are generally done in thousands of patients in different regions mm-hmm. and countries once we have all the data of phase 1 2 and 3 and uh, once they are submitted to uh, they are the regulatory agency in the country and if they are found to be Uh, having a, a good uh, benefit risk balance which means higher benefit and lower risk uh, then you know the the regulatory agency would look into it and then give approval for marketing in the particular indication in a, a particular population once they are in the market then as a requirement from the regulatory agency these are to be tested again in a larger population but we okay. don't in the trial but we call them as a post marketing surveillance uh, to see the larger uh, number of you know i mean we don't expect but uh, what happens in a clinical trial is you know generally we take a homogeneous population that is between 18 mm-hmm. to 65 mild to moderate disease male okay. and female but yes, just end, to check the probability probably right no once they get in the market you never know you know they right. may be coexisting illnesses you know right. um then they can could be a lot of uh, co uh, concomitant medications and yeah. age may be different you know so anybody can take it right correct right. because we generally don't test in pediatrics and uh, pregnant women but mm. unfortunately you know it is still given in you know uh, pregnant women because it is definitely required then you know mm-hmm. because we have a sense of uh, safety ness or a safety profile from the earlier study so once uh, so we co- we also call this as a pharmacovigilance as well so as a part of pharmacovigilance the manufacturing or manufacturer or the marketing authorization holder is supposed to give psu as periodic safety update reports for four years and then um, it goes on you know in the market if there is any change in the you know formulation like from immediate release they want to go to a sustained release then you know or there is a route of administration a change or there is a target population also is now different from what is been tested in 1 2 3 you know or somebody wants to have a fixed com- dose combination what we call ftc then you know um, they have to do a study to make sure that they are you know uh, working well as well with the new formulation so say no they go on with the same phase again if there is any changes required or so we call them as phase 4 phase we call four. them as phase 4 okay. because it's a okay. study clinical study but okay. now there is i mean we have a huge safety profile there but now okay. they want to test in a different population a different indication hmm. from whatever data has been collected so far maybe over the last 5 to 8 years you know so yeah. that's called as phase 4 So generally people get confused between phase 4 and pms uh, these two are different things altogether okay so and generally how long is this period uh, uh, dhakar i mean i am assuming from the talks that it would be like a couple of years um, you know uh, trials and stuff like that yes it takes about 8 to 12 years for a new mm-hmm. pharmaceutical to come to uh, the market for a vaccine is generally low um, for a medical device is still uh, lesser but but also takes a lot a uh, huge amount of money as well yeah so right. yeah yeah so in a, a clinical trial may take about you know uh, 60% of the time 
Makes sense. Or at least fifty percent of the time, because once we know that the drug is working, then it takes. That's good to hear. And uh, in your experience, is there any? I mean, I, I'm pretty sure you might have seen this, right? After reaching to second phase or third phase, some phase. I mean, they have to go back to the uh, research again. Is that ha- have that ever been? I mean, in your experience, or it's generally smoother after phase one? No. So uh, we give a you know. Uh, Uh, example like a funnel you know often funnel where uh, 10000 uh, chemicals are you know we begin with but ultimately one may ca- turn out you know uh, after about 8 10 years or something like that uh, so but if it comes to phase 1 the rate of decline or the rate of rejection is much more lesser than what is seen in a in a discovery stage yeah understood So uh, coming to I think now the, the audience might have got an understanding of clinical trial. So what do you think would be the career opportunities in this industry, right? For for especially for the students of uh, bachelor's in life science and medical sciences, uh, what kind of uh, industries they can go in and what kind of role they can go in as they pass on from their uh, their studies, basically. Sure. So as I mentioned in the beginning, like. graduates with you know medical and uh, life sciences including pharmacy nursing mm. physiotherapy dentistry or even medical they always have you know good opportunities in the pharmaceutical industry okay um, one thing people don't realize is uh, most most thing that the new vaccine or a new drug or a new device comes from industry directly you know it is not the case always in the most of the time uh, it comes from academic centers so oh, okay. yeah so students have to realize that you know the research on new pharmaceuticals can be done or generally done in in a good scientific ac- uh, academic institutions oh okay. uh, even i can give an example like everybody think is a pfizer vaccine or a astrazeneca vaccine but very less people realize that pfizer vaccine came from biontech you know which is a from germany a, a couple who discovered that mrna platform oh, uh, so. plus others also so it's a very small company and asazenica's uh, chad uh, ox you know also came from the jenner institute and the oxford vaccine group and they oh, were okay. uh, they were you know let out to asazenica for bulk manufacturing and also marketing uh, worldwide so okay. these are the scientific you know huge ones who actually make a break and then transfer the technology to industry when okay. industry takes the risk of you know if it is working it's a you know a rock star if it is not working then it gets dumped into the rocks so that's one the second place is you know of course in the hospitals they can start the career as a, a, a site coordinator or a clinical research coordinator mm-hmm. uh, of course there is pharmaceutical companies always and um, some of the pharmaceutical companies um, especially from the multinationals they generally outsource their uh, uh, trials to cro's contract clinical research organizations oh, okay yeah and these are both in private as well as in in, in uh, government setup so yeah to answer your um, question short yes there are quite a lot of opportunities in this uh, academic as well as in industry uh, both in the government and the private sector and how is the demand kind of increasing or static or something in especially on the job side of it right because because the most of the audience would be students and uh, people who are doing research they would be more interested into understanding that aspect uh, yeah so i can give a very simple uh, example for that no as long as sickness is around you need medicines yeah. to treat them True. that is one and you know that this bacteria and viruses or even fungus or parasite just don't disappear from the face of earth right so you mm. need to prevent them also so we need preventive medicines as well including vaccines you know so um, of course people think vaccines are only for prophylactic but vaccines are also Uh, there for therapeutic as well you know for yeah. treatment purpose also so as long as sickness is around there is a requirement for all these medicines mm-hmm. and vaccines uh, including for pharmaceuticals biological 
medical device cosmetics mm-hmm. you know so in, everything is required and now uh, as we get along and we want to make it very you know uh, i mean like i said uh, patients need to live happier right so me on you know small things like thermometer also are regulated because oh, okay. based on the readings from the thermometer a doctor or a physician can prescribe some medicine now if the thing is reading you know uh, differently or reading wrongly mm-hmm. then right. you will end up prescribing something which may not be you know good for the patient True. right so mm-hmm. yes so there are uh, there are you know uh, opportunities for everyone mm-hmm. uh, and of course you know i think science organizations are, have been always there and will mm-hmm. always be there but the only thing that they require is they require highly motivated and enthusiastic kids to be around the mm-hmm. you know experienced people so experienced people you know of course they have quite a lot of wisdom in them mm-hmm. but uh, they need legs and you know hands to you know to do the desk job right so mm-hmm. yes so students definitely have a good opportunity and they will be in demand for a very long time that's yeah. that's good uh, and uh, after bachelor generally people have this question in mind right uh, should i go for master some some students are very clear right i mean what their the path is but some students uh, generally want to know about you know uh, can they do masters and after master does it uh, help in a in a better way for them in research or in other career fields so what is generally the trend or uh, the thought behind the same yeah i i mean my personal experience is i always uh, you know advise students to do the masters and phd uh, if they are doing the uh, that route or if they are doing mbbs or bds or bpt i always tell them to do their respective masters program in that it's not only you know having a masters means that you know everything no but it brings in maturity your age also brings value into the work that you you know bring around so yes they need to do they can do but uh, i've seen people where, you know where they take a break and say that uh, i can't afford because of uh, personal reasons and mm-hmm. they uh, switch off to industry and probably you know after some time they may come back and do it so my personal experience me is that you know after mbbs i worked for 5 years i did my md i worked for 2 years then i did my masters then you know as it came along i took whatever opportunity came along for education purposes for yeah. building up my knowledge probably yeah, not so, every student have that much patience probably <laughs> so yeah so <laughs> but but they they realize later because yeah. uh, in a company what happens is the more the background education background you have it is definitely understood that they are inquisitive to learn more to do more and do well because the more you know you will do the perfection becomes better and better yeah it's like you take a you know intern or a training and put them on the you know a car workshop or manufacturing then you know a experienced person who is working on you know, the automotive or the car that you drive so as simple as that yeah but unfortunately uh, in india uh, there were few uh, institutions who were you know giving out masters in clinical research but they all you know vanished uh, because of many reasons so in india yes very few institutions are around who can give this unfortunately there are some uh, people you know who try to uh, teach but they do they themselves don't have background to teach uh, so it would be good if they attend some you know training programs like what uh, you know learn to upgrade and you know uh, uh, make intern uh, like you are doing and very very few institutions are trying to do it but if you're going to uh, su- such places make sure that uh the students you know um, should be aware of the background of the you know trainer uh, rather than uh, the organization or you know who's conducting because that's very important for them to know and yes uh, uh, universities abroad give uh, masters program in regulatory affairs clinical research uh, or even in data management and all that but if not they get into industry they learn from hands on and the training that the company provides and they can move on from there 
so i think i probably we have covered most of uh, in the previous question but i think there was a question on uh, basically what do we advise the audience right to put their dreams in pharmaceutical industry yeah so uh, not just concentration of pharmaceutical industry they should also concentrate uh, on the hospitals that they work you know where they can be uh, the site coordinator or a clinical research coordinator who can help the busy physician uh, mm-hmm. at the hospital so clinical research is nothing but data and data and data and a lot of uh, patients uh, and follow up with the you know with the patient itself or the participant trial participant uh, so there is a lot of work in the hospital because most of the clinical research work is done in a hospital yeah so they can start a career as a site or a clinical research coordinator uh, assisting the research team uh, what we call as the investigators and sub investigators uh, right from ethics committee submission and follow up screening patients you know uh, mm-hmm. but at the same time you know answering is done by the investigator mm-hmm. um, and then follow up uh, uh, you know on this uh, trial participants coordinate sample collection processing shipment getting the lab reports and you know, coordinating with the imaging departments getting their reports checking the information you know what the study investigator and others have written on the hospital file what we call it as a source document and then transcribing all this information from all these reports onto the case report form that is one big thing you know uh, responsibility plus on the other side they can they have need to coordinate with the sponsor or the cro and also participate during monitoring archive uh, documents and then mm-hmm. keep following up with the ethics committee for any information that they need to be given as per the uh, regulation and as per the ethics committee's sops that is one big chunk of work that uh, mm-hmm. is done generally at a hospital so that is a good area to start with Uh, and then mm-hmm. once you have a year or two uh, you know of experience in that side then you can get into the industry because then you have some knowledge of what is happening at the other end yeah so once they are done they can join the industry in a pharmaceutical uh, uh, in company uh, or a cro or um, it could be imaging industry uh, like imaging cro or a bab cro Uh, or a central lab or in a, uh, you know drug logistics uh, but in a pharmaceutical industry uh, we have a department called as a medical affairs department or the clinical research department and within that we have several uh, you know um, sub units like uh, we have the regulatory affairs the project management the clinical operations medical writing um, then you know data management um pharmacovigilance biostatistics uh, scientific uh, writing so quite a lot of them are there and depending upon what you like you can go into these places in, in this department like for example if you like uh, you, if you are okay uh, not just like if you are okay with the traveling then you know uh, clinical operations and medical affairs is a good area that takes you all over the city uh, the country as well as internationally you know but if you don't like travel then there are other options like uh, regulatory affairs medical writing scientific writing data management um, biostatistics if you have that background um, so there are areas there are areas where you know depending upon what situation are you in so um, uh, there are you know uh, like in uh, pharmaceutical companies what happens is especially in a indian pharmaceutical company everything is done internally so they so they take the higher lot of people and put them in this department and then the uh, the career move and you know, starts from there whereas in a cro's uh, most of the cro's that we have in, in india are uh, are the subsidiaries of larger corporations uh, abroad so they may be very specific so when they take you in clinical operations you do the monitoring either on site or remote or risk based or if you are in data management then you have some it inclination then it could be uh, or even with saas program you can be a saas programmer to a data management professional or even you know be a part of the database creation if you are in a central lab 
then you know there are uh, central labs who get all the samples from the clinical trial sites across the country or the region and then the process that according to a particular standard operating procedure so that processing uh, if you like uh, that could be another place that you can be um, but there are opportunities so if you are a good you know if you have good uh, communication skills especially in the uh, written communication skills then you can get into medical writing or scientific writing okay if you have it skills then you can get into the data management um, or if you are good at you know talking to people and working around yeah. then uh, clinical operations and monitoring is a good option yeah so there are there are there are quite a lot of opportunities and people can do that that was i think a lot of uh, streams to consume by the students i think in this video probably need to do, do some research on the roles which you have just mentioned so that they get better idea or probably they can you know check with their mentors and stuff like that that's good um, and have you seen any real life examples uh, where you would say wow this student has done marvelous in this you know industry or something like that beyond you of course yeah so there are thousands of people uh, who are in the clinical research industry and i think uh, nobody has a regret uh, other than you know a busy schedule with in the company and busy travel that you do if you like traveling then i think there is no regret in that but okay. yes but you know i think uh, what you do or you know, what you like at the end of the day is that you are part of a, you know a drug that comes to market and that makes people live happy you know or live longer yeah that more true. makes you happy you know at the end of the day so right. that is one yeah so i you know you and my giving my own example i started from site coordinator cra project manager to project director to program director to head of the, the department to head of the organizations in india and also the subsidiaries of mncs in india so yes so that is one um, th- there are opportunities everywhere okay i think probably the last question of this talk series uh, do you see any opportunity for a person who likes this field plus also have an edge on you know uh, entrepreneurism and wants to do something of his own I know. I mean, doing research and everything is quite expensive for uh, an individual to be dealt with. But is there anything um, you have seen uh, the new students who are upcoming? Uh, they can probably, you know, uh, go in that direction as well. Or yeah, so I call it as the chicken and the egg. You know, so uh, yeah. So if you uh, if we you know you start a company and you have uh, a team of freshies in that. it does not help a pharmaceutical industry because they need experienced people but you are experienced and you do not have a company or a team of your own then companies don't give you to you uh, don't give the you know or outsource the you know job to you because they say you don't have an organization so yeah it's all a chicken and egg story so but i always see that um, i've seen with myself you know from my experience that Uh, people trust a experienced person rather than a new um, fantastic glittering organizations so yeah for a entrepreneur uh, to, for a student to become an entrepreneur immediately is a challenging but uh, after maybe a, a decade or two decade experience um, and if you have a excellent team with experience and uh, motivation uh, you can uh, be a entrepreneur at the end of the day and if you see any of those cro's who started with everybody started as a individual and um, they have grown to multinational and you know thousands of people in, in as an employee yeah so there are opportunities that that's good to hear mr sudhakar uh, uh, i think we are done with the today's talk show but if you want to make your background blur and want to show your book uh, uh, that would We really have to put the students. Yes, I, I I'm just uh, removing my blur. So here is a book um, called a CRA. Um, this is meant for uh, students who are just trying to you know join the pharmaceutical industry as a clinical research associate. It's a good book, very short but uh, very good. And if you want to uh, be an entrepreneur, 
um, you know and come into medical device innovation this is another book that i have written and both are available on amazon so yes uh, you can uh, learn from them because you don't get uh, books to you know um, uh, study uh, such things uh, so that would be a good place to begin with perfect thank you very much mr sagar thanks for your time today i think uh, students would have enjoyed this talk show and would get enlightened with uh, some of the information provided sure and i think i recommend uh, uh, the listeners to you know come back to uh, learn to upgrade or make intern and then uh, if you have any questions you can just write to them and then i can always you know come back and give you the answers whenever they require yeah definitely thank you mr sagar thanks a lot thank you Thank you so much yeah